Abjection, Wikipedia article audio. The term abjection literally means the state of being cast off. The term has been explored in post-structuralism as that which inherently disturbs conventional identity and cultural concepts. Among the most popular interpretations of abjection is Julia Kristeva S. Kristeva describes subjective horror as the feeling when an individual experiences, or is confronted by, what Kristeva terms one's corporeal reality, or a breakdown in the distinction between what is self and what is other. The concept of abjection is best described as the process by which, one separates one's sense of self from that which, immediately threatens one's sense of life. Abjection prevents the absolute realization of existence, completing the course of biological, social, physical, and spiritual cycles. The best representation of this concept can be imagined as one's reaction to gazing at a human cadaver, or corpse, as a direct reminder of the inevitability of death. In Literary Critical Theory Cases the object is, as such, the process that separates from one's environment what is not me. Kristeva's concept of abjection is utilized commonly and effectively to explain popular cultural narratives of horror, and discriminatory behavior manifesting in misogyny, misandry, homophobia, and genocide. The concept of abjection builds on the traditional psychoanalytic theories of Sigmund Freud and Jacques Lacan. Drawing on the French tradition of interest in the monstrous, and of the subject as grounded in filth, Julia Kristeva developed the idea of the abject as that which is rejected by slash disturbs social reason the communal consensus that underpins a social order. The abject exists accordingly somewhere between the concept of an object and the concept of the subject, representing taboo elements of the self barely separated off in a liminal space. Kristeva claims that within the boundaries of what one defines as subject a part of oneself and objects something that exists independently of oneself there resides pieces that were once categorized as a part of oneself or one's identity that has since been rejected the abject. It is important to note, however, that Kristeva created a distinction in the true meaning of abjection, it is not the lack of cleanliness or health that causes abjection, but that which disturbs identity, system, and order. Since the abject is situated outside the symbolic order, being forced to face it is an inherently traumatic experience, as with the repulsion presented by confrontation with filth, waste, or a corpse an object which is violently cast out of the cultural world, having once been a subject. Thus the sense of the abject complements the existence of the superego the representative of culture, of the symbolic order, in Kristeva's aphorism, to each ego its object, to each superego its abject. From Kristeva's psychoanalytic perspective, abjection is done to the part of ourselves that we exclude, the mother. We must abject the maternal, the object which has created us, in order to construct an identity. Abjection occurs on the micro level of the speaking being, through their subjective dynamics, as well as on the macro level of society, through language as a common and universal law. We use rituals, specifically those of defilement, to attempt to maintain clear boundaries between nature and society, the semiotic and the symbolic paradoxically both excluding and renewing contact with the object in the ritual act. In social critical theory, the concept of abjection is often coupled with the idea of the uncanny, the concept of something being unhomelike, or foreign, yet familiar. The abject can be uncanny in the sense that we can recognize aspects in it, despite its being foreign, a corpse, having fallen out of the symbolic order, 
creates abjection through its uncanniness creates a cognitive dissonance. Abjection is often used to describe the state of often marginalized groups, such as women, unwed mothers, people of minority religious faiths, sex workers, convicts, poor and disabled people. From a deconstruction of sexual discourses and gender history Ian McCormick has outlined the recurring links between pleasurable transgressive desire, deviant categories of behavior and responses to body fluids in 18th and 19th century discussions of prostitution, sodomy, and masturbation. The term space of abjection is also used, referring to a space that abject things or beings inhabit. In Organizational Studies Organizational theory literature on abjection has attempted to illuminate various ways in which institutions come to silence, exclude, or disavow feelings, practices, groups or discourses within the workplace. Studies have examined and demonstrated the manner in which people adopt roles, identities, and discourses to avoid the consequences of social and organizational abjection. In such studies the focus is often placed upon a group of people within an organization or institution that fall outside of the norm, thus becoming what Kristeva terms the one by whom the abject exists, or the deject people. Institutions and organizations typically rely on rituals and other structural practices to protect symbolic elements from the semiotic, both in a grander organizational focus that emphasizes the role of policymaking, and in a smaller interpersonal level that emphasizes social rejection. Both the organizational and interpersonal levels produce a series of exclusionary practices that create a zone of inhabitability for staff perceived to be in opposition to the organizational norms. One such method is that of collective instruction, which refers to a strategy often used to defer, render abject and hide the inconvenient dark side of the organization, keeping it away from view through corporate forces. This is the process by which an acceptable, unified meaning is created for example, a corporation's or organization's mission statement. Through the controlled release of information and belief or reactionary statements, people are gradually exposed to a firm's persuasive interpretation of an event or circumstance, that could have been considered abject. This spun meaning developed by the firm becomes shared throughout a community. That event or circumstance comes to be interpreted and viewed in a singular way by many people, creating a unified, accepted meaning. The purpose such strategies serve is to identify and attempt to control the object, as the object ideas become ejected from each individual memory. Organizations such as hospitals must negotiate the divide between the symbolic and the semiotic in a unique manner. Nurses, for example, are confronted with the abject in a more concrete, physical fashion due to their proximity to the ill, wounded and dying. They are faced with the reality of death and suffering in a way not typically experienced by hospital administrators and leaders. Nurses must learn to separate themselves and their emotional states from the circumstances of death, dying and suffering they are surrounded by. Very strict rituals and power structures are used in hospitals, which suggests that the dynamics of abjection have a role to play in understanding not only how anxiety becomes the work of the health team and the organization, but also how it is enacted at the level of hospital policy. In sociological studies, the abject is a concept that is often used to describe bodies and things that one finds repulsive or disgusting, and in order to preserve one's identity they are cast out. Kristeva used this concept to analyze xenophobia and anti-Semitism, and was therefore the first to apply the abject to cultural analysis. 
Imogen Tyler sought to make the concept more social in order to analyze abjection as a social and lived process and to consider both those who abject and those who find themselves abject, between representation of the powerful and the resistance of the oppressed. Tyler conducted an examination into the way that contemporary Britain had labeled particular groups of people mostly minority groups as revolting figures, and how those individuals revolt against their abject identity, also known as marginalization, stigmatizing and slash or social exclusion. In Psychotherapy there has also been exploration done into the way people look at others whose bodies may look different from the norm due to illness, injury, or birth defect. Researchers such as Francis emphasize the importance of the interpersonal consequences that result from this looking. A person with a disability, by being similar to us and also different, is the person by whom the abject exists and people who view this individual react to that abjection by either attempting to ignore and reject it, or by attempting to engage and immerse themselves in it. In this particular instance, Francis claims, the former manifests through the refusal to make eye contact or acknowledge the presence of the personal with a disability, while the latter manifests through intrusive staring. The interpersonal consequences that result from this are either that the person with a disability is denied and treated as an other an object that can be ignored or that the individual is clearly identified and defined as a deject. In art By bringing focus onto concepts such as abjection, psychotherapists may allow for the exploration of links between lived experience and cultural formations in the development of particular psychopathologies. Bruin SCU demonstrated the critical importance of bringing together Foucauldian ideas of self-surveillance and positioning in discourse with a psychodynamic theorization in order to grasp the full significance of psychological impactors, such as shame. Concerning psychopathologies such as body dysmorphic disorder, the role of the other actual, imagined or fantasized is central, and ambivalence about the body, inflated by shame, is the key to this dynamic. Parker noted that individuals suffering from BDD are sensitive to the power, pleasure, and pain of being looked at, as their objective sense of self dominates any subjective sense. The role of the other has become increasingly significant to develop mental theories in contemporary psychoanalysis, and is very evident in body image as it is formed through identification, projection, and introjection. Those individuals with BDD consider a part of their body unattractive or unwanted, and this belief is exacerbated by shame and the impression that others notice and negatively perceive the supposed physical flaw which creates a cycle. Over time, the person with BDD begins to view that part of their body as being separate from themselves, a rogue body part it has been abjected. Consider also those who experience social anxiety, who experience the subjectification of being abject is a similar yet different way to those with body dysmorphic disorder. Abject, here refers to marginally objectionable material that does not quite belong in the greater society as a whole whether this not belonging is real or imagined is irrelevant, only that it is perceived. For those with social anxiety, it is their entire social self which is perceived to be the deject, straying away from normal social rituals and capabilities. Studying abjection has proven to be suggestive and helpful for considering the dynamics of self and body hatred. This carries interesting implications for studying such disorders as separation anxiety, biologically centered phobias, and post-traumatic stress disorder. The roots of abject art go back a long way. The Tate defines abject art as that which explore themes that transgress and threaten our sense of cleanliness and propriety particularly referencing the body and bodily functions. 
Painters expressed a fascination for blood long before the Renaissance but it was not until the Dada movement that the fascination with transgression and taboo made it possible for abject art, as a movement, to exist. It was influenced by Antonin Artaud's Theater of Cruelty. The Whitney Museum in New York City identified abject art in 1993. It was preceded by the films and performances of the Viennese actionists, in particular, Hermann Nitsch, whose interest in Schwitter's idea of a Gesamtkunstwerk led to his setting up the radical theatre group, known as the Orgien Mistrian Theatre. The group used animal carcasses and bloodshed in a ritualistic way. Nitsch served time in jail for blasphemy before being invited to New York in 1968 by Jonas Mikas. Nitsch organized a series of performances which influenced the radical New York art scene. Other members of the Viennese actionists, Gunter Bruss, who began as a painter, and Otto Muhl collaborated on performances. The performances of Gunter Bruss involved publicly urinating, defecating, and cutting himself with a razor blade. Rudolf Swartz Kogler is known for his photos dealing with the abject. In the late 1960s, performance art became popular in New York, including by Carolee Schneeman. Mary Kelly, Genesis P. Orridge and G. G. Allen did this type of art. In the 1980s and 1990s, Fascination with the Powers of Horror, the title of a book by Julia Kristeva, led to a second wave of radical performance artists working with bodily fluids including Ron Athey, Franco B., Lenny Lee, and Kira O'Reilly. Kristeva herself associated aesthetic experience of the abject, such as art and literature with poetic catharsis an impure process that allows the artist or author to protect themselves from the abject only by immersing themselves within it. In the late 1990s, the abject became a theme of radical Chinese performance artists Zhu Yu and Yang's He Xiao. The abject also began to influence mainstream artists including Louise Bourgeois, Helen Chadwick, Gilbert and George, Robert Gober, Kiki Smith, and Jake and Dino's Chapman who were all included in the 1993 Whitney show. Other artists working with abjection include New York photographers, Joel Peter Witkin, whose book Love and Redemption and Andre Serrano whose piece entitled Piss Christ caused a scandal in 1989.